Hello and welcome to episode 63 of the Large Format Photography Podcast. My name is Andrew Bartram and I'm joined by Eric Maffey all the way over in the United States of America and by Simon Riddell who's on this side of the water quite sensibly too. Hello Eric. Hello Andrew, how are we? Hello. I'm okay, thank you. A bit cold. No one can afford the heating here. Can they, Simon? Hello, Simon. No, it's it's pretty shit, actually. But having said that, I've got the heating on max because I'm trying to use up all my heating oil because I'm moving, like, literally uh-huh. now. <laughs> I can, yes, you're, so you're sitting in a short sleeve for the benefit of viewers who, listeners who can't see the camera. Simon's sitting here in a, in like a T-shirt, I think. T-shirt, pretty yeah. Much. And I'm, I'm trying to get sort of psychologically trained to... Um, experience the cold so right well more 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 of that momentarily uh, just go out How and do you do with your heat on up full turn the heat off sir and open your window i don't, I don't well, know there must saying. be there must be a reason to it we'll get him to explain it momentarily. <laughs> well it's really it's really great to have you on the show thanks for being with us uh, uh simon uh, and before we start probing you <laughs> that did not come out right <laughs> take that back Sorry, I was thinking of a, proce- a procedure I had just yesterday. Now. <laughs> no, no. None for me, uh, sir. I need to um I need to, I need to thank our previous guest, which was none other than the Afghan camera lady herself, Sammy, who we still don't know her last name, but she was her um, last name is Afghan camera lady and she's Sammy amazing. Afghan. She is wacky, wacky and amazing. So if you haven't listened to our previous show, which was about a month ago, then uh then you should do so. So in the photography show, the photography show is something that happened in Birmingham. Um, Birmingham. In, uh, Birmingham, yeah, in Peaky Blinder territory. Yeah. Um, and I went there this year, first time since before COVID. And in the sort of area, there's a, like an analog area and a, a place where folks can go and listen to wise and learned people learn uh, talking about their work. And one of these folks was Simon, Simon Riddell. And Simon uh, uh, was just wonderful. And I approached him afterwards and said, look, come on, would you like to come on the show? I think Simon's been on Sunny 16, so you can look um, look out for him there about a year or so ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, w- of course, we're going to probe much more deeply into the psyche of Simon Riddell. <laughs> <laughs> no! I, you didn't, you so, didn't mention that you'd be probing me today. I mean... <laughs> So we um, sounds like we're beaming him up <laughs> like, at the uh, at the photo- at the photography show. Simon was uh, was talking about his his work, which some of some of the listeners might be familiar with, which is his work entitled "Mental Collodion." And and Simon had a, a there, there's articles out there you can link in the show notes. I'll link you to some articles, but um, it, we'll we'll touch on a bit of that story as as we move through the the interview with Simon. Uh, but uh, this is not all going to be about that. This is uh, I'd really like to kick off, Simon, with um, actually what you're about to do, because you're about to embark on um, on something really interesting and quite special. And it does involve uh, a load of this mental collodion stuff as well. So, you know, we're not going to do the normal introduction stuff, but tell us what you're about to be um, getting up to and why you've got the heating on full. <laughs> yeah okay so uh, I mean I, I guess a little bit of background I'm I'm sort of uh, 50% of my time historically has been spent in Sky in the Isle of Sky and 50% on the mainland in the highlands of Scotland um, literally last month I made a decision to sort of commit to Sky <laughs> um, and I guess about a year ago, I, I had this um, really stupid idea to um, to take wet plate collodion photography process up into the Cullin Mountain in the Isle of Skye. Um, so it's essentially sort of combining the most difficult form of photography in the most brutal environment that I can ever think of doing. Um, I guess that the reason for me doing this is because you know, I felt that mental collodion was kind of coming to an end. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't successful in getting funding from Creative Scotland, um, which would have seen me do approximately another two years of the project. Um, didn't get that. So I was thinking, well, what do I do now? You know, mm-hmm. um, obviously, I use mental collodion as a kind of cathartic process for myself um, during and just coming out of the, um, you, you know, uh, COVID kind of era. 
and I thought, well, what am I going to do now? I've I've learned this this art form, you know, in the basic, you know, kind of definition. Um, you know, I know what I'm doing with it, but you know, I don't know if anybody really truly masters that. But anyway, so I thought, well, how do I push my limits? How do I you know what where's the next challenge coming from because you know it's it's cool to shoot in a studio and it's cool to do all the multiple exposures and explore you know mental collodion but you know what's next I thought so and every time I drive to Sky um I was driving past the Cullin Ridge um which is you know just completely stunning and brutal and you know with my sort of background in climbing rope access all that sort of stuff and I just thought well you know I think around about 20 years ago I went up the in pin I actually ended up snapping my ankle when I was up there <laughs> um and um and and still leading it anyway so, so I remember of course after there. that experience you want to bring an eight by ten and like wet plate yeah. stuff up with different yeah. yeah why not of course no sorry please Absolutely. continue <laughs> you know let's go and snap everything um <laughs> So I thought, yeah, I remember being up there. Um, I did a little bit of research into the roots and stuff like that. And then I just really, really quickly spiraled into, right, this is what I'm doing. This is the project. Um, Very, very quickly got in touch with, um, you know, a mountain guide called Adrian Trendle. Um, He himself has, you know, gone through some, you know, um, bouts of mental health as well. So I thought, right, well, Okay, did a little bit of research, had a phone call with him and, you know, said to him very early days, look, you know, this this will be fraught with, you know, failure in terms of photography, probably. Um, You know, is it something that you might want to get involved with? And obviously he didn't have a clue about, you know, what large format photography was, let alone wet plate. Uh, So we went on a couple of recce's, which was absolutely horrific. you know around about this time of year um last well, bear, year bear, bear, sorry to stop you bear yeah. in mind this when you say this time of the year you're about to embark on this journey just as we've moved into horrible weather yeah and the days are pretty short yeah you need a lot of light for you know <laughs> shooting wet plate yeah. yeah and you're going in like november december is that right yeah although mm. it, it, Depending on the, the positioning of the ridge, right, you're going to get the maximum light exposure because uh, you're up UV. and you're exposed, right? Yeah. Versus UV, yeah. if you're in a if you're in a valley or whatnot, like you know, you you lose sun at like three o'clock in the afternoon, you know. So mm-hmm. at least you can True. say you're getting a few extra hours being all the way up top. Yeah, I think we're looking at about eighteen hours of darkness, you know, when we go up, <laughs> which will be a bit shit to be honest. Are you camping but... up there? Are you are you yeah. are you bivvying yeah. up there? Yeah. So I mean, I'll take you back to the sort of first you know yeah. expedition yeah. That, that we went on, and th- this is when you know I didn't have a lot of gear. Um, I was just like, well, how do I get up there with the minimum amount of gear, just even large format stuff, and shoot sheet film? Um, so I ended up taking this beast of a, you know, four or five camera as the Toyo, um, you know, folding field camera, which is fucking massively heavy. I know. It is. I've got one. That's what I use. But I, I'm not stupid. I just carry mine in the car, get out the back of the car and make <laughs> yeah. some exposures and put it back in the car, Simon. I don't, you're not going to yeah. take that up a mountain, are you? Really? I know. No, no. so I you? did. <laughs> and and I got to Adrian's house about, I think it was about five o'clock in the morning, left, left my place at clock drove there and um yeah he's like mate that that bag is is ridiculous you, you, you know that's that's just <laughs> mental and at that time I had like a Manfrotto like um tripod that was really heavy as well and I said oh bollocks to it I'll just leave that you know and he goes well what, how are you going to shoot then I said I don't know I'll just <laughs> find a rock or something I don't know um, so anyway, ended up leaving the man Manfrotto behind and, you know, there's, there's pictures he took of me, like, um, resting the, the, the Toyo on my bag and, you know, being in the prone position and, you know, I got, to, actually I got some nice shots, but it was horrific. The conditions were absolutely brutal on the first time, um, talking like minus 15, um, degrees Celsius, uh, with 40 mile an hour winds and we were just getting battered um 
and you know there was a lot of ice on the ground as well and it's it, it takes a lot for me to sort of say look you know let's bin it off and and, and go back because you know a we're not going to get to where we're going to want to be and you know b you can't shoot in this weather so anyway we, we ended up you know coming back about two thirds of the way up for, for where we wanted to be and I was absolutely like just literally dying because I couldn't get my um my blood glucose up you know I'm, I'm type 1 diabetic and um I was just crashing the whole time and it was just like sachet after sachet of glucose just just to get down and it was just horrendous absolutely just I thought fuck am I going to be able to do this you know this mm-hmm. you know this is just stupid and um you know I guess I've spent this year kind of improving my systems of work and my insight into where we're going, the routes, um, the gear that I might be able to take, the gear that I can't take, and obviously, you know, diabetes control. Now, um, you know, I'm I'm 100% sure that it is happening. And, you know, within the next couple of months, I will be coming down from that mountain with some seriously epic plates. So... I have to add, well, two things. One, um, you know, the way you describe that first, uh, we call it a recce, mm. recon, we would say over here, but recce. Um, yeah. I, I'm constantly absorbing the, the British turns of phrase. <laughs> I cannot help myself and slaughtering them terribly. Um, it is just, it's like a hobby now at this point in time, just to get Andrew's ex- facial expression just like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, I can see you describe that, and I'm just like, that sounds awful. That sounds yeah. great. Like there's a certain yeah. type of person for whom that's like, yeah. Oh, that's well. Can when can I do that? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. um, because there's a bit in the after, like you get down from that type of thing or that type of experience, mm-hmm. whatever it happens to be, and you're just like, that was aw- awfully awesome because we got through it, and it's like, holy shit, that was. You know, there's there's something magic in the retelling of doing something that's really, really, really difficult. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. at the moment, you're like, I'm going to die. What the mm-hmm. fuck am I doing up here? And then you get done with it. You're like, that was amazing. When are we going back? Um, so yeah. is there like a part of that that's in this for you? But also, How, yeah. that, you know, and, and uh-huh. also past that, like, what's the driver? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going from from studio and 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 that sort of thing to something like pretty physically extreme um yeah so yeah. They, they can't be like an inconsequential driver to that so what is the driver to go balls out up this mountain with with wet plate correct wet plate mm-hmm. yeah correct yeah. i think i think the driver is <clears throat> I don't know. There's there's a lot to this, and you know, <laughs> I ask loaded questions, sir. <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, I mean, just like the the amount of content that goes into what is driving me is 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 quite quite a lot. Um, I think if I could describe it in a few words, is mm-hmm. you know, during well, going back to like pre-COVID, I just did not have a sense of purpose. Um, you know, and I think I've I've been like that since since my diagnosis, like in um, you know, when I was 18, just like two weeks after my 18th birthday, I was diagnosed. And you know, pre pre-diagnosis, I was fit as a fiddle, super, super, you know, engaged with what what I wanted to do, which was go off into the forces. And um yeah, I mean, what, got, sorry, forgive me for asking, but what was it you were diagnosed with at 18? Yeah, so type 1 diabetes. Okay, right. right. Okay. Which is not so much of a great birthday present, I can tell no. you. Um, and, like, you know, I, I had a very specific skill set. I would geared everything up to the forces. You know, I was just like, great, I'm away from all the bullshit with school and bullies and just – being around shitty people in a shitty place and you know I've I felt great and then 
you know being diagnosed I like I didn't actually know what it would mean for, for my future and then very quickly I, I learned that I couldn't go in the forces you know my papers were you know scrapped in a sense um and then that that was like you know that was it for me I had no purpose and I guess for you know uh, up until a maybe about a year ago I was just spiraling um you know moving from one kind of adrenaline filled activity or job to the next and just not finding my place um and and just having like just being lost really um but then obviously when when covid hit like I mean I I, I had a really good relationship um I just proposed to my um my now wife um and things were going great you know and covid hit and fucked everything up um massively we ended up you know having to call it quits due to one thing and another and that was just the 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 sort of what i felt dropped me to you know my knees basically um you know so after that kind of breakup um that's when I started to shoot wet plate um, because I'd ordered these chemicals. And while Sonia was still um, at the house, um, I, had, I had started to shoot wet plate and I had no gear. I was shooting outside and Isaac, bless him, you know, was was a big part of that. I think, you know, he, he is my first plate. And, um, you know, then then the breakup happened and I was absolutely flawed, but I still had these chemicals. And it's pretty much, you know, between Isaac and and having these chemicals, um, they were the pretty much the only things that kept me going. And, you know, um, I launched myself into the shitty old, wet, dark, horrible garage that is not really a good place to be shooting anything, let alone collodion. And I just, just went into it. And that's where uh, mental collodion was born. Um, so I, I think... You know the the to answer the question, <laughs> the, the the wet you know the wet plate collodion is is pretty much my purpose. You know I'm so mm-hmm. interlinked with the process and immersed in it. It's I don't think it's ever gonna get um, boring or or anything. You know I I feel like it's it's probably saved my life. I mean, let's let's be clear. Yeah, so that last sentence really, it's probably saved my life. Let's be clear. Um, at some point, I'm not sure where the timeline was. Your father died like across the road, didn't he? In, in yeah. mid mid sermon, I think, or yeah. Mid- and so you witnessed that. You you had to try and revive him. Um, mm. I think before the ambulance uh, came, and, yeah. and I guess you I guess you were there as he passed. I'm not sure. Um, mm-hmm. So you had that. Was that before the? breakup or after the yeah, breakup yeah. or where was so that because that was all of this contributed to all of yeah, this yeah, contributed yeah. to just a downward spiral for you didn't it uh-huh. yeah and and what I didn't realize until I went for my latest sort of bout of therapy was that there was a shit ton of stuff that happened to me before this that I never dealt with and you know um you know, I think when dad passed in 2016, obviously, you know, t- like to get the details in there, um, he he was he was literally he was given uh, the children's address in, in the church that was opposite my house at the time and suffered a, you know, heart failure. And, you know, one of the congregation members um, knocked at the door. Um, and yeah, that was it. That was the start of it. You know, um, I saw the look on his face and he didn't even really have to say anything he just said Simon you know your dad's collapsed and by that time I was legging it just you know legging it over went into the church and I was straight into you know um basic life support um and you know so that that I didn't think that was such a big deal um until I was sitting in my car, you know, a couple of months afterwards, and I could I couldn't pull out of a junction that was just literally down the road from the church. I just could not pull out of the junction. Um, absolutely shitting my pants that something would, you know, just come in, you know, T-bone me sort of thing. And I thought, what the hell is going on? And again, I never, you know, never registered that there was something up. 
and I needed to sort myself out. So I went through months of this, years of it. And um, yeah, so I guess like when you look at my life from the age of 18, um, it's just been a lot of grief, a lot of trauma. Um, and all these things seem to pop up, you know, pretty much when COVID hit. Um, and I had nobody around me other than Isaac, really, just literally nobody. And to, to swing it back around, though, to the the mountain effort, right? And yeah. the things that you mentioned earlier, um, being unable to enter as the services, as you call it over here, we call it the armed forces service, whatever. Yeah. Um, and you see, you said you pursued just job after job or, or pursuit after pursuit that was adrenaline based, right? Sure. Physicality. Yeah. So yeah. is this um, the the ridiculous mountain climbing thing you're you're attempting to do? I say that with affection, by the way, good sir. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like circling back around to connect this thing that saved your life, like wet plate, collodion, to is, this is, thing that prior to this was both your um i would say your therapy and your savior because you use physical activity essentially uh, like recognizing light here right now you and me um as your form of therapy right for a long time mm-hmm. and are you bringing that just a back full circle to try to connect these two things so interesting um through therapy i've learned so much about myself and I knew that the sort of adrenaline filled kind of activities were not healthy for me. Yep. Um, And I guess a long story short, what, what I'm sort of trying to say is I guess the mountain will show me who I've become now um, throughout you know, going through this mental health journey and um, becoming a better version of myself, consistently pushing my limits in in terms of, you know, exploring who I am, why I'm like this. It's it's not it's not me falling back into that trap of, right, I'm going to jump on a motorbike and, you know, max it out every day and narrowly avoid going to jail and, and stuff like this. Um, it It's not like that. It's it's, I want to I want to go up there because the mountain is always the place that strips away all of the layers, takes away all the bullshit and, you know, shows you who you are. And I'm really interested and enthusiastic to go and find out, right, what I can achieve with, with the emotional insight that I've learned um, now. And I, th- I think... You know, I know I'm a completely different person and, you know, I'm in such a good, positive place now that I just can't wait to get up there. I'm just literally, I just wish I could just be up there now doing this. Right. And I didn't have all this bloody moving house and all the rest of it to, to get through. Um, so it it's it's all about going up there getting the layer stripped back and 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 seeing who i really am and what progress i've made and and where i go from there so it's it's almost a combination of of physical and art therapy absolutely yeah yeah i mean cuz you know sonia my wife now um we um we were speaking the other day and she said you know you don't have to keep pushing yourself so hard you know and and I said yeah I I know I realize that but you know sometimes there are time constraints and you have to really really push and you have to get it done Mm -hmm. um and I said I'm not I'm not doing the mountain project as a as a form of just like punishment you know uh, because guaranteed you know that's what I used to do uh used to just run and run and run and you know just beast myself at every every occasion every every kind of what do you say um every opportunity yeah that's the one opportunity every opportunity it was just all about pain and suffering and pushing 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 and it was the only thing that actually got me through to the next day it was like you know just ridiculous and it's not about that now it's about harnessing all of that Mm -hmm. and you know going up there in complete zero negativity 100% positivity 
and and seeing what I can create. And I think the big thing about it is I'm I'm not afraid to fail anymore. Like you know, it's the documentary that I'm going to shoot up there is obviously going to include mental clothing because it's integral. But it's this the whole concept is a about inspiring positivity around mental health awareness and recovery and and also b is to you know tell people that it's okay to fail you know you should embrace failure because if something's that easy that you nail it first time what's the fucking point right yeah you know um so you know i think if i could inspire people to you know reach out if they are struggling and and to not stay within that comfort zone that everybody is is kind of you know I guess doctored into sort of saying you know don't go out and push yourself sort of thing you know that when you're out of your comfort zone that's when you learn that's when you start knowing yourself and you see where your boundaries are and you come back and you know you might fail a hundred times but the next time you go out you might succeed yeah, how, but- it's like you were saying Eric how good are you going to feel when you've been through all that shit and and you come back and you actually you you're able to look at something that you've created right at the same point though you need to be a, have a internal platform that allows you to fail right where when yeah. you don't or when you don't succeed or when you you know you come back with something less than what you you really like dreamed of and like blown up in your head that doesn't yeah. turn into an excuse to like beat yourself into into bloody bits mentally and emotionally i did that when i failed coming out of the tour divide i was damn no i was suicidal when i didn't yeah. come out of the tour divide when i dropped out of the tour divide i'd spent yeah. years preparing for that it's just for context for yourselves and listeners it's a 2750 mm-hmm. mile mountain bike race from banff canada the u.s mexico border Self-supported, yes. you ride it solo. You're not allowed to accept help from other competitors. Um, it's it's the granddaddy of ultra endurance, yes. solo cycling events. Um, I did the the border to border course, U.S. to Mexico on a motorbike, as you say over there. Um, <laughs> yes. It's solo in five days flat, 500 miles a day, and mm-hmm. then a few years later, I went back on a single speed mountain bike, and I made 500 or 600 miles before I just blew up pretty mm-hmm. much and i was in an awful state when i came back it in, in so, terms of phys- physical you blew up oh just, physically i was a beast physically except for like yeah. some some issues you know yeah. that but no mentally i was in a, i was a i was a wreck i yeah. didn't go on a, a bike packing trip for over a year after that and yes. for months i was just damn near suicidal because i spent so much time building that effort Mm-hmm. And so that that was like your purpose at that time that was, yeah that was absolutely you... yeah it was the center of my self-identity yep and it was that was not not good you know yeah, at all I hear you. yeah so you have to approach these things from a solid foundation to be able to learn from your failures and enjoy your failures and enjoy your efforts because if you're not and you go up there and, and it's just gonna be another excuse to tear yourself down it's yeah it's awful for you and for everybody around you absolutely yeah absolutely it goes without saying like it's not just you that are going through through shit you know everybody that knows you is just yeah. like concerned and mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's less than any fun so we'll um we'll, we'll perhaps have a chat with isaac in, in a little while but just tell us mm-hmm. tell us and the listeners a bit more about the specific project how uh, i mean you've hinted that you've thought about it and you've got in touch with adrian um, but mm-hmm. who's uh, what's the duration what's the practicalities around it what uh, what sort of equipment you're taking how long you're going for what do you hope to achieve from it um, who's doing the video shooting what do you want to this is, these are loads of questions okay yeah, well, just, yeah. It's, all coming, it's all coming out of me now what yeah. are you doing I mean I see wonderful opportunities for this in terms of furthering um, you know your mission these days yeah. of raising mental health awareness mm-hmm. um, taking it on the road how you how do you what can you get any income from this you know are you still firefighting is that or is that done with now but... no no so um yeah i came out of the fire service a number of years ago um probably about 10 years ago um, oh was it that long ago i didn't know yeah, yeah yeah and you know obviously since then i you know i started my own fire risk consultancy business up and that was really successful oh, okay. but 
just like my heart is not in it you know mm-hmm. hasn't been in it for a long time I did a fire training course um for a big organization a couple of days ago and just felt really sick I was just like fuck this you know but then I was like well you know it's money yeah you've um, got to pay the bills haven't you you've got to you've got to keep... pay the bills uh-huh. yeah. and actually I don't even have a sleeping bag at the moment um <laughs> Um, okay, this doesn't sound great. So you're not filling me with too much optimism. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not feeling optimistic about that point either. Um, so I guess um, at the moment, I you know I started this GoFundMe page. We've got about 110 quid at the moment. Um, so you know that was literally to pay for um, you know gear in terms of GoPros because there will be no film crew. I pitched it out there to you know. Um, some organizations and it's just like they're not they're not buying it and that's fine um so uh, you know very you know in a nutshell it, the, the documentary will be filmed you know extensively you know by me um using obviously you know gopros when we go up the mountain and and then it'll just be a, a you know a, a sort of um compilation of you know i guess some some interviews are going to take place i've actually filmed a couple of emdr therapy sessions um so my therapist um has, has kindly sort of said that yes she's she's on board with you know actually uh, she's going to do an interview with me and we're going to look at my diagnosis and my symptoms and how we might look to tackle those obviously this is all historic now but you know so that that is going to go in there and I think it's really important for me to show an actual segment of the therapy going on because you know what better way to explain therapy and and all the rest of it than than to to actually show it going on so you know it's quite an emotional um section of the film that will go in but I feel it's very, very important because, you know, if 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 people have got information and it's accessible, then, you know, maybe it'll inspire people to to reach out and, and think that actually that that form of therapy looks like it might work for me, as opposed right. to thinking, oh, I don't know what what fuck that is, you know. Um, so so that's going to be in there. Um, the first actual date that we go out is going to be the 8th of December um, myself Adrian his wife and the the um the mountain guide the mountain rescue guide not guide what I'm saying the mountain rescue team leader um who um coordinated the recovery of a fighter jet crash um up in the Kulin uh, back in the day, I, I can't remember the actual the year that it happened, but this guy went up and he coordinated the the sort of you know search, rescue, and recovery. It's kind of the anniversary of that soon, so we're taking him up, and I aim to take a, a wet plate portrait of something up there, um, potentially him, you know, paying respects, um, or all of us paying respects to that, and that's going to sort of. Uh, form the basis of a good shakedown in terms of gear processes you know what I can achieve up there um so yeah so the 8th of December um next month that's that's the first time that we go up and we actually shoot you know on the ridge or or very close to the ridge um so this crash site this crash site was a fighter jet in recent times we're not talking about world war ii things because obviously we wouldn't have been alive then would it no, um, Eric. It's um, Eric might be able to help me out here. It was an American <laughs> fighter jet, um, F eleven, oh. maybe. Um, I don't F-14. know. F fourteen. Uh, there were there were F eleven and fifteen um, and based here, weren't there? And perhaps they still are. I don't know. Those sort of. There was, are they those tank buster aircraft with little stuff? No, that's there? an A ten. A ten. Yeah. No. No. You know, you A-10, probably F-11. have in Scotland. I think there's an. Well, I know there's. I have a friend who used to be a, a submariner. I know there's a big naval base so we're talking Scotland. about flying things not i know but they have not things like naval air forces there simon's called it yeah you know an aircraft carrier um yeah. so it's probably an f-14 tomcat or something on those yeah. lines yeah this this uh, it was know, an f something regardless yes yeah, exactly um <laughs> so it's a pr- pr- particularly sort of grisly um you know crash site unfortunately um 
so um you know so, some of the remnants of the aircraft are still up there um so you know that that's i'm leaving it open ended in terms of that i you know in terms of what i want to achieve is to to a get up there b you know use the gear and and hopefully shoot a nice wet plate up there um thereafter that is going to inform you know the more brutal and and sort of dangerous side of of, of peak perseverance which is going to consist of multiple overnight bivvies up there in you know sub-zero all the rest of it um you know um and just to sort of see where um where i go with it really um so you're not talking about one long adventure this first trip on the 8th is going to i don't know how long it takes you to hike up mm. to this crash site you're going to take a camera some plates yeah so some yeah. silver some silver in a box yeah and a te- and a and an ilford tent or something no no so i'm moving away from the ilford tent because i've seen a picture of you <laughs> testing out that ilford darkroom tent a while oh, yeah, yeah. do you like do you like it i've been curious yeah. about it well clearly yeah, not yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> so michelle at ilford um kindly said look do you want to take it out and test it you know real world sort of thing out out in the sticks and i said yeah, sure, I'll take it out in the sticks. <laughs> I don't think she really realised where I was going. Um, so there's um, the I took it up the Kerrang, um, which is in Dubai, and that's bloody windy up there. So I got about a 15-minute window, launched the thing up, literally on the side of a cliff, about three metres away from it, just about a 100-metre drop, um, pitched it up, and, you know, this was all me sort of testing. And at that time, I didn't have a 5.7 camera, um, I had the um, Intrepid 4x5 and, um, you know, I was successful enough to, to get some plates and use the tent, which performed actually really, really well. Um, but, but you know, then then I sort of um, contacted um, Max and Naomi and Intrepid and said, look, I'm doing this project. It's definitely happening. I'm going to be successful at, in, in some way, shape or form. Um, is there any way that you can, you know, potentially, you know, lend me a, a five by seven inch? Because I think four by five up there just doesn't do it justice. It's not a great format in in my mind. So um, yeah, they 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 sent me a five seven, and then um, I started to to adapt the 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 method of of my approach in terms of there's no way I'm going to be able to take um, the 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 Ilford dark room up there because a it's heavy b it's going to turn into a wingsuit up there um and i'll be in it with a load of chemicals and it's just going to be a shit day um, <laughs> you're going to go down the mountain in it <laughs> just, just fly down i'll tell you what take a take just a straight out of a cart. movie take a horse and cart up there that'll be better Make more <laughs> yeah, sense. yeah yeah Pip-pip. exactly um so now i i did a lot of research into into what i thought would work up there and i've come um, I took a, a gamble with this uh, this um, changing bag um, or ch- no changing tent. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so well, you can big square the TARDIS things with two sleeves in or sleeves at the that, front. That's exactly it. Yeah, a little yeah. bit more streamlined. Um, so it, it's pretty light. Um, I've tested it multiple times now, and it's been absolutely perfect. You actually. Um, you actually have uh, a window inside like on the front of it yeah. so um this this window um you have a, a velcro strap that goes around your head with a foam pad sort of thing on the front um <laughs> and on the other side of that foam pad is velcro so when you when you're actually you know you've got your arms in um you know you you put your head right onto the bag and that creates your light seal and then, so the, the the sort of the first time I was testing it, I was like, "Oh shit!" You know, I, like my eyes are about two centimeters away from all this silver, and it's windy, and I'm on rocks. And I thought, "This, <laughs> this so, is not safe." But you've got, you got to pour the you've got to go pour the you've got to pour the plate. So what are you using to see? Because you've got you've got this collodion stuff, and you you've got a tin tin plate, I guess, and your aluminium plate, and you're mm-hmm. pouring it. What kind of plate? I just can't I can't believe how difficult this could aluminium. be. Aluminium. Oh, you um, said it right. Aluminium. aluminium. <laughs> yeah. so, so you've got this aluminium plate. Yeah. And you're in you've got your you've got your hand stuck in this changing yeah. tent, which I can visualize. Yeah. And you've got your face pressed up to it. Yeah. Breathing in all the lovely whatever it is you're breathing in as well. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. So well, it's not like it's an open front. Like the tent should theoretically be like taking care of most of that. It's not like you're <laughs> like putting but your nose you a, in the tray and going. But isn't it dark in there? Or have you got? I mean, have yeah, you got a little so, battery operated torch or something, red light torch or something. So, yeah. So I have some red LEDs that go around the perimeter of the inside of the tent. Um, uh, battery powered, obviously. Um. And I actually pour the plate, you know, before I've strapped my eyes into it on, on all the rest of it. So the, the tent yeah, is open. Yeah. I pour the plate, um, immerse it in the silver nitrate tank, which has actually been built from uh, Lund Photographics. Um, because I thought, right, these these tanks that I'm using um, in the studio are great, but they leak, you know, all yeah, over the yeah. place. And I thought there's no, you know, I'm going to have no silver when I, when I get to the top of the bloody mountain. So anyway, somebody put me on to Lund. I said to them, you know, how leak proof is it? And he said, pretty much. So that was fine. So I got one of those, a 5.7. Um, so pour the plate, put it in the uh, silver nitrate, uh, three minutes pass. And that's when, you know, I'm, I'm putting the Velcro strap around my head. And then I'm getting, you know, my arms in. A couple of times I forgot to put the strap around my head when my arms are already in i'm like fucking hell you know and that's when it <laughs> starts you know um so anyway so it's it, you know it's step by step it's in my head now and yeah. you know so what when i take it out of um, the silver bath then you know that's all fine but essentially this tent came without any kind of film in front of of my eyes and um, so basically what I've done is cut a map case out, you know, you know, like a clear sort of map case. And I've hot glued that on the inside of the tent so that there's no way of any silver nitrate getting in my eyes. Um, so that's all taken care of. Um, so, yeah. And then it goes in the plate holder and then, you know, all the rest of it is, is kind of history. But um, it works very, very well on a flat, stable surface. Um on rocks, it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, you know, in the wind, I'll actually put some rocks inside it to keep it, yeah, you know, weight yeah. it down. Um, so it's really, it's really like a creative kind of process where you have to learn very, very quickly on your feet um, and adapt to your environment up there. Um, well, and yeah, so and you got to find some place to put it. Like, okay, is there some place I can put this that's out of the wind that'll act as a wind block to help keep yeah. it stable? You yeah. know, um, yeah. all of those things. Yeah. And yeah it's, it down yeah i mean can you stake it down is it possible like put beaner yeah. carabiners on it and like run run a little cord around it and stake it down? yeah yeah okay. you can do that um i think for for peak perseverance through the winter i'm not gonna have any time for that i'm right. just literally gonna have to throw a boulder in there and you know move it out of the way and <laughs> have somebody go. stand over it holding it down while you're like inside of it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, but that that's the thing. So very early days, we were, we, you know, myself and Adrian were thinking, well, you know, it'd be great to have a film crew up there, you know, filming and stuff, but it's it's just not going to happen. Um, and, uh, you know, when when I, we had a brief in a couple of weeks ago and I said, look, Adrian, I, like, I can barely talk to you when I'm doing wet play, especially, you know, out in in this harsh environment there's so many things that are going on you know both safety and artistic and and all the rest of it I said we're not taking anybody else up because I just won't be able to deal with even speaking to them you know so it'd be great to have people that that, that could maybe carry the some of the gear up but then that's that's just taking the piss in my sort of yeah, opinion like because a, like a sherpa <laughs> yeah yeah so i'm not into that at all you know i want to be completely it, this this project has, has got to be the absolute maximum level of difficulty for me you know because no, yeah again, no. <laughs> really <laughs> what's the point in, in in just like you know taking people up to carry all your gear what you know what's what's literally what's the point well, a good yeah. documentary crew stays out of your way. I mean, that's yeah. speaking from personal Eric, experience. A Eric good documentary crew stays the fuck out of your way. Yeah. Um, and you establish ground rules with them. So it's yeah. it's not as if you can't have somebody up there. It's it's a bit of a choice of making sure you have um, well, in your case, because it's such a small, tight sort of space you're gonna be working with, yeah, probably like one or two or three people who yeah. are also very adept at at mountaineering because they have yeah. to hold their own 
who yeah. also know how to stay out of your way when you're working. Yeah. Right. And not, yeah. not interfere. I think, right? I think it'd be just so good if, if, if we could get a crew, but oh, you know, I'm just kind of at my wits end of, you know, approaching people and saying, look, this is what I'm doing and trying to explain mm-hmm. the process. And it's just going nowhere to be honest. Yeah. So, and a lot of the mountain documentaries are, you know, predominantly shot, you know, you know, first person sort of thing, you know, on a GoPro and all, and all the rest of it. Right. So I think it's kind of expected and, you know, so that's what, that's where I am with it. And it's literally around the corner. So the, 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 the photography nerd in me has to ask, how the hell are you going to keep the chemicals at temperature? Like these things need to be in a certain range, don't they? And, and at, at yeah. certain temperatures, they, they lose sensitivity. They are actively like, what uh-huh. plate wants to be at whatever temperature wet plate wants to be. And I highly doubt that's 15 degrees below zero. Yeah. So <laughs> like when, when, when I was learning all of, you know, wet plate and stuff, the consistent sort of temperature that everybody was going on about is like room temperature, 20, 20 degrees Celsius, whatever. Yeah. Um, since then I've learned that that's, you know, that that's all well and good, but it doesn't, it's not the be all and end all certainly. And actually cold temperatures might actually help me in terms of, you know, having, there's one particular shot. So I want to get to the summit of, of, of the ridge, which is, um, called Scare Alistair. It's 992 meters, but to get to that. So there's a, this is fucking horrible. They call it the great stone shoot. And it's just, oh, it's just the pits of everything like you go up <laughs> down you go up and then you fall down and you're fucked by the time you get up there and there's you know but anyway when I, when when you get up there there's like just pre-summit the about 10 15 meters from a summit there's like a nice kind of flat-ish i mean it's covered in boulders but it's kind of flat and i thought that that's a good place for me to actually set up the dev tent um and thereafter leg it up um, through this system of boulders and get onto this very, very, very narrow um, sort of ridge. So it's really exposed on the left and right of you, you know. Um, and I thought that is that is the place where I need to shoot because a it's a summit. B yeah, the views are absolutely stunning in a 360. So I thought, okay, so I go up, I set the camera, you know, compose my shot, come back down, do the plate, da 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 da, da and then get back up, and then. You know, I'm in this meeting with um, Adrian and he goes, you're not going to be able to do that in, in five minutes. There's no way you're going to get up that in snow mm. and ice and all the rest of it. Um, I think it's going to take you 20 minutes. And that Because that once, you're, once you've got your collodion on your plate, yeah, you have to shoot that within X minutes or whatever, don't you? Yeah, exactly. I mean, normally I've had best results, you know, shooting and, and pushing it to like maybe five absolute so i think i've pushed it to about seven eight minutes before mm. you know i think shane balkowicz is is i think i remember saying you know you can maybe get away with 15 minutes in the right conditions mm. but he's in america um, it's hot isn't it you know and it probably, stay, it well, probably stays doesn't it stay a bit sort of no fluid, so it, does it not work that way no. He, he was no. we were we were messaging recently and you know he put a post on and i think it was like minus 20 or something like that um and they've got like two foot of snow he's in north dakota at the moment you know so mm-hmm. um but bless him what a support you know right from the start you know just to put it in perspective um i i was you know you should, sorry really, like, you should you should get him over yeah. here right and say okay, okay. you want a challenge Get all your fancy people in clothes and the American flag and get them all up the top of that mountain and then see if you can do your Ponzi wet yeah. plate. I, I'm Ponzi sure wet plate. Yeah. <laughs> Reenacting the yeah, some yeah. scene from American history. <laughs> Sorry, Shane. I, do you know, I, I think he'd be up for it. That 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 guy yeah. is, is, is the same wavelength, you know. Um, but bless him, he helped me out so much and continues to do so. So, you know, um, absolute respect for the guy. Um so, so yeah, I, I'm still kind of in the throes of thinking that particular shot through, whether it be um, to negate going through this system of boulders. Maybe we pitch a rope up and I just like leg it up the rope. Um, You've got to get you closer know, to it with your dev tent, haven't you? Well, really? this, is, this is it. This is what Adrian su- suggested. But I do, <laughs> having been up there, you know, it is so exposed and like if it's good conditions, then brilliant. But it is mm. never good conditions. Well, don't go up in December. Camera out. 
don't go up, up in December. December. You you did recall him I mean, saying it has to be the maximum possible difficulty, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, but, to, to, to quote the man, not going in December is taking the piss out of it, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. So, but I mean, that that's just one of the shots. There's there's some other locations that we're definitely going to go to. Um, we're going to have to bivy overnight in a, in a couple of, t- um, uh, what would you call them? Uh, small caves, um, you know. Oh. So you're not, take, you're not taking like little tents or anything with you then? No, 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 oh. nothing like that. So oh. literally yeah. when, when I... Um, have enough money to to get a a decent sleeping bag it'll be a bag and you know and that's it you know that's 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 it I don't, what, can bag, you get you know. for, what can you get for 110 quid because which is what your go fund me we, we need to push your go fund me <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely sweet fuck all at the moment <laughs> um so oh yeah no, so know, a, a good bag and a, like a four season bivy um yeah, so like the the bag that Adrian's got is, I think he said it's about 10, 15 years old and it's really good. Um, it's quite light. It's a down bag. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we when we go um, to the to the caves, I mean, these are very small caves, you know, you'll fit like me, him plus gear and that's it. Right. Um, but actually, w- one of the views from that particular cave is pretty stunning. So um, I think what mm-hmm. we'll try and do is go there first Um and 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 see how it all goes and maybe shoot in hopefully a little bit of shelter having said right. that if the wind's blowing straight at us then there's no shelter you know we're yeah. completely exposed um you know and and i think i was thinking this driving um back to nig today the actual physicality of it you know you're doing like multiple hours of walking plus with all my medical crap to deal with i'm going to be absolutely exhausted when we get there you know, I think my pack weight is going to be in the region of about 35 kilograms, which is so mm-hmm. stupid. Um, so I'm going to be exhausted when I get there and then having to shoot the most technical form of photography um, with all its constraints. Um, you know, it's, it's completely out of my comfort zone. And that's that's what's that's what's geeing me up for it, because I know I'm going to be able to do it um, at some point. But I'm very, very, very expecting to, to to fail, you know, multiple times. But, you know, whatever happens, I know that I can do it as long as the, you know, the conditions maybe turn turn a bit more favourable. So how many days on this first trip, you're going up to shoot this aeroplane crash site, but then you've got this ridge. That's a two different locations. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Two different locations. And then you've got the cave where the bears live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah giant spiders or dragons yeah. or something you know. oh yeah um so the 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 aircraft trip is gonna be two nights three days you know walk in and that's um, a distinct that's gonna be a separate trip on it standalone trip yeah. that one is it yeah okay. standalone good good opportunity to shake everything down and see see what the crack is with stuff um thereafter um you know, it's going to be a case of checking in with Adrian um, regularly to see when we might get a break in the weather. Um, July. That mean- Ch- Simon, <laughs> July. July. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, like, you know, I, I, I really, the, the reason I've, I've chosen the winter is A, because it's going to be like extreme, but, but B, that's for me when the mountain comes into its own um you know when you get when you're getting snow and ice up there and you get the contrast and textures and Mm -hmm. glistening and stuff like that so that's really you know the only time that I can really think of wanting to shoot it up there because I mean it's been shot so many times digitally on film and all the rest of it but you know I think for me the only engaging time of year is is winter you know and what do you going forward once you've once you've been successful? Because I, I have no doubt that you will come away with some images. They, yeah, it may be not what you imagined. It may be better than you imagined. Maybe worse. I, I've no idea. But having seen what you've achieved up to this point with wet plate, I'm sure it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I read somewhere that you were hoping to have um, some of this work exhibited at a hotel somewhere. I think. In, yeah. Uh, so, in the sky. so one of my kind of. Um, supporters um is is the hotel at sligacan um which is 
literally at the base of you know um the cullin um it's okay. steeped in kind of mountaineering history as well so like if people go and do the ridge over a number of days normally it's like two days some people can do it in one whatever so they, they start, start what yeah they start at one point and they come down and they go for a pint right. or multiple pints at the pub um so i've got an That's exhibition good. up there at the moment um you know um so so that you know definitely that'll be a place to exhibit um but um yeah i i think in terms of what i come down with i mean i should put you in the picture in terms of what i'm going to shoot on i'm not going to shoot on aluminium um because you know you can't print from that or aluminum sorry eric that's no, okay <laughs> i love aluminium <laughs> Saw your face, and it was. Just <laughs> I like, love it. I oh love my it. God. Please, by all means. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now I'm. I'm. I would like to shoot an eight ten amber type up there, which is on glass. But I think mm-hmm. that's. You know, I don't know if I can actually fit all of that sort of stuff in the in the changing tent. Plus, mm. you know, glass. imagining. Yeah, I mean, glass up there is just gonna be a pain in the ass. So, um, I've opted to shoot on um, clear acrylic. Oh, um, okay yeah so that should work you know very very well three mil clear acrylic so no breakages but we'll still be able to take prints from them um mm-hmm. and you know you know the, the thing i don't really like about shooting um aluminum um or you know people call it tin types or whatever is it's it's flipped you know so you look at the the image and it, it's not it's not the mountain it's the mountain back to front sort of thing mm-hmm. um and whilst there's this train of thought of look, you know, just go up, get something for fuck's sake, at least, you know, <laughs> um, I don't want to do that. It's got to be, you know, I want to stay true to the 1851 process. Um, so realistically, the only sort of deviation from that is shooting on acrylic, uh, but it's still, you know, it's still clear. It's still, you, you know, you're going to be able to turn it around right. and see the mountain for what it is. Um, wow. So, yeah, that, that's the thinking behind that. Um, the other Ooh. the other sort of gear sort of issue is there will not be sufficient amounts of water in supply to wash the plates up there. So you mean melting um, snow? Yeah. So I mean, if, if we if I mean the, there should be snow up there, so we will have <laughs> the opportunity to to, to melt snow, um, but it's still avoid the yellow stuff. Okay, just a yeah. T- yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but but do you know it, it's still not doing even if you were able to melt snow you're gonna have to do tons of that to wash the yeah. plate off properly so you're not if you're doing that you're not doing the actual plate justice so there's no point in doing that up there so what i'm going to do is um steve lloyd um from chroma camera is going to design me um what we're thinking about is you know like a um a 35 mil uh slide cassette you know for when you put it in the projectors and you see you know yeah all, all the rest of it that to me if if we could scale that up to being like five by seven um with maybe six uh six inserts available in that so i want to shoot you know maximum i don't anticipate shooting any more than six in a day um so essentially what we need to build is a holding tank oh yeah with water, with water to you know? stabilize it yep yeah yeah, and then yeah, we'll yeah. do all the washing, um, you know, either back at home or at the hut or, or wherever. Um, but, uh, you know, I was speaking to Marcus um, and um, <laughs> we were speaking the other night and um, I said, yeah, this this is what I'm thinking about doing. And he put me on to this product and, yeah, it looks good, um, but it just Which won't was, do for- Mar- Marcus, who are we talking about now? Marcus H. I can't pronounce his surname. It's really funny because on his Patreon um, the other day, I noticed that he was doing this video thanking all his patrons, and he was like very apologetic if he messes up anybody's surname. Um, <laughs> and I, I can't even pronounce his surname. So um, Ho- Hofstadter is it something like that? I can't, I can't visualize it in my head. My memory is absolutely gash. Um, but yeah, everybody knows him. Um, good guy, really very not. supportive. Um, yeah so so um what he did say was another one of his patrons um had had some experience in this sort of stuff and um you know had seen the video and realized that you know these are sub-zero you know minus 15 whatever and he said that you know um you can put um 
uh, antifreeze, sort of, you know, whatever the active uh, ingredient in antifreeze is. Glycol, is it? Glycol, Glycol. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, going back to when I was servicing extinguishers, fire extinguishers, what what I used to put in was ethylene glycol. And and Mm -hmm. I had already thought about this. But then, you know, um, but yeah, there's obviously that chemical will go in in, in terms of a 50-50 ratio with water. Um, so it, it this really is just so the water doesn't freeze. That's what yeah, it is. Freeze, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you're putting you're trying to put your plate through like slush. And that's obviously <laughs> not going to work. No. <laughs> yeah. um, It'll so be art as, of a kind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll be, yeah. Um, so I think Steve's, Steve's firing on with that kind of design very, very soon I've, I've actually seen those holding tanks old yeah. ones yeah um for just that purpose for um old wet plate and tin type photographers who weren't going to develop like right then and there yeah and i've actually seen like vintage versions of that so that that sounds really familiar i'm like i've seen that before but like late yeah. 1800s style thing please send me on any images of that sort of stuff if yeah. you have any because i I'll haven't been able to locate anything um okay. So, so yeah, he's, he's going to design like, so I, I need like, you know, six inserts and then we'll put it in um, a watertight container and then strap it to my bag somehow after I've shot it, you know, and then it's going to be a long descent, trying not to snap anything on, on the way down. Um, the, the other really good bit of kit I've got is, um, uh, it's a tripod made by gearing. And it actually is, you know, it's carbon fiber and aluminium, very, very, very well machined, very well built. Uh, but it, it um, dismantles into trekking poles. So uh, two of the legs. Oh, um, brilliant. That's a yeah. good idea. That's a good use I of love the that. material, isn't Super it? Super cool. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, and like on on my first trip up to the Great Stone Shoot up to Scare Alistair, by the time I got back, I hadn't actually put the um, the spear tips um, of, of the trekking poles in with Loctite. And I just forgot about it. And um, yeah, the, the the tips had come off. So hopefully they're going to send me some of the tips in in, in the very imminent future. Um, but that's a really good bit of kit. Amazing tripod, super light, you know, and if it, if it can stand up to the Great Stone Shoot and, you know, it, it can go anywhere. So yeah. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed I get the tips very soon. Um, you know, so that that's pretty that's that's most of the gear kind of aspects that, that I'm taking up. Um so yeah, it's it's really just like fingers crossed I can raise a bit of money. Um I, I want to get at least three GoPros. Um mm-hmm. I, I want to be filming in 4K. Um so I need some some about three three GoPros, I need some wireless mics um and thereafter a sleeping bag and i'm good to go you know um it'd be great mm-hmm. to get you know up to that target of like ten thousand uh, pounds because that'll enable me to do you know a really good job of the editing process right. um you know but you know to be honest guys if it doesn't happen i'm i'm still going to go up and you know film it in whatever way shape or form i can, I can and i can see nothing's going to stop you no no, it's, uh, it's not so much. Would this? Why don't you? Um, I, I was going to say take a. We never take a break, but there's, there's going to be a, an enforced <laughs> break. Either uh, Simon Forster is going to just play some cut us whist- off. Whist- whistling music, cut <laughs> us off, or we, or me and Eric yeah. are just going to start whittling on between ourselves. You want to go and get young Isaac, and we'll um, we'll sure. have a chat with him and see what he thinks of his mad father. So Isaac. How crazy do you think your dad is to be climbing up a mountain with a giant camera and colliding and stuff? Well, quite crazy, yeah. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. do you, um, so from what your dad had said, um, uh, Izzy, Izzy, is that right? Am I calling you right? <laughs> Izzy's fine, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Suddenly I had a, suddenly I thought, Izzy, am I calling him the right, by the right name? <laughs> we, won't, we won't call is you he, Isaac. In case Izzy, you Izzy? 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 Is he? Is he? In case you think uh, I'm telling you off, um, <laughs> you, you you know your dad's had a rough time, and you've been there, haven't you? At his side from a lot for a lot of this time, and what what um, had how, how have you helped him and got involved in his journey from you know suffering quite badly with mental health problems, and then his journey through wet plate photography? Did um, have, have you been sort of part of that journey? Um, kind of. Yeah, I have helped him. Yeah, through some stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. How, what what have you done that's been particularly helpful? I've just been by his side normally, um, yeah. just helping him out and stuff. 
So when when your dad first discovered or started exploring wet plate photography, um, did you, he was out in his garage somewhere. Were you out there with him? Did you go out and help him? And how were you, um, were you really, trying to help? Were you trying to help your dad in other ways? Or? I at the start I wasn't really interested, but I did learn like get into it more because he taught me. Um, uh, he taught me more about it, and then I got into it more. I started helping him a lot. Do you remember that? Obviously, in COVID, um, you know, you, you can't go out and shoot people. So, um, Just as well, really, might... that's a very unfortunate term. <laughs> Just rephrase yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, do, do you remember? Actually, you know, a couple of meters away, just outside. Do you remember sort of sitting for me multiple times during the day? Um, because there's there's one plate and I've I've taken it down now, it's 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 packed for moving. But do you remember you know you were having to sit there for like 10 seconds and not not do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. So Izzy was basically, you know, my my uh my subject for like lots of the early plates. And I, you know, I'm 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 pretty ashamed to say that I got really pissed off um in in i guess the first couple of months of shooting because i wasn't pissed off with izzy but i was just pissed off with the process and not being able to nail it um and there was this there's one plate that i've got that is above my bed remember yeah. so you just kind of sit in there um and as soon as we got that plate that was like that was the turning point because i had like this this baseline to work with um but yeah, it was it was a stressful time for like the whole family because I was just just beside myself with wanting to shoot wet plate and being completely self-taught other than a couple of um, phone calls with Shane. Um, you know, it was it was very stressful for the family because I was I was super, you know, like running in and out of the house with chemicals and just, you know, just a nightmare. So Izzy, you know how to make wet plates now, right? Like you've taken photos of your dad and like done something. What's your favorite part of, of making what for you, when you're making what plate photograph and taking a photograph of your dad or somebody, what's your favorite part? Like what's the coolest part about that? Um, mainly taking the lens off and counting. Yeah. <laughs> when you're like 1001, 1002, like that. Yeah. Yeah, what's cool about it? Uh, it's just like I don't know. It's like pressuring. You've got to do it all over again and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's really stressful, but it's also exciting. And to get the wet plate done and see it come out. Right when the image first starts to like appear, it's like really milky, and it's like, do I? Yeah. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Yeah. 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 That is, I think, one of the coolest parts. I don't do wet plate, but I have friends who do. And that moment where the plate starts to slowly come out, and you're like, is it, is there something there? Is it there? Is it any good? And then it like comes, it's like appearing out of the mist, isn't it? Yeah. 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 What, cool. um, what, 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 do you talk about it to your friends at school? Does it uh, ever come up? You know, the whole situation with your dad or the photography? Well, we're talking about, like, jobs and stuff, and someone okay. mentions it. Like, yeah. like photography, I'll say something, but not just out of the blue, because no. nobody nobody in my school really care. They're all kind of idiots. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, they wouldn't. Um... Um, opinions were had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's hard enough trying to um, talk to youngsters your age, you know, about film cameras, isn't it? You know, a camera with a film in, let alone something like Wet Plate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think a lot of, in my experience, a lot of, um, I don't want to say kids, but let me say kids, like young adults to kids your age are, are really interested in it because it's something physical, right? Like in your life, most of the things in your life are digital. Yeah. For the most part, they're on a computer. So it's got to be, is it interesting when, when you make something that's real? Like, what's it like to make something that you can actually hold in your hand versus stare at on a screen? 
Um, yeah, it, it's much more nice to have it. Like printed, sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've lost my place. Um, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> so is it is it nice to hold something as opposed to just like look at yeah, the screen? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Especially if, like if you're in a museum and looking at our art, it would be better to hold it and see it instead of like just looking at it from. Oh well, I suppose you. No, but you're right because you, yeah. you know, it, yeah, it's nice to like hold something and look at it like really intimately. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Is that what you mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a physicality to it. Yeah. Right. And then you can Especially- say, "I did this." Especially when you, I mean, an image on a plate is, I mean, I've only, I've only had one experience of it. Uh, one of the older podcasts, uh, Simon, is when the other Simon who we record with on occasion, Simon Forster, and, um, well, he used to be a regular co-host. Uh, me and him went, to, we went to visit, yeah, before Eric su- um, supplanted him and kicked him out. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we went to Dave Shrimpton's house. You, you familiar with Dave? Oh, Dave? Dave, what a dude! Yeah, In legend. So Dave, Dave lives forty minutes from me. Yeah. So we did a uh, we did a day with him, and there's a there's a there's two podcast recordings, you know, back in the in the history sure. of the podcast when we went and um, just spent time with him, really. And then we went and uh, shot some wet plate. I. I did a I poured a plate and yep. took a picture and it's on uh, on our Facebook page the picture at the top of me and Simon and a mannequin which we pretended was Eric. <laughs> and, um, I'm really plastic. I'm I don't I'm not. Here. I um everyone tells me I look like George Clooney on this uh, photograph this wet plate because it's very flattering. I think wet plate portraits are very flattering. You absolutely look like George Clooney in real life too, <laughs> doesn't he? <laughs> Doesn't he? Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. There we go. There we go. Thank so if you um if you get a chance to go and see Dave, it is um uh, is is madness. That is a house and studio. You know. Yeah. It's he like was a giant actually fun house. planning to come up. You know, um, he was actually planning to come up and 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 just you know chill out and and you know come up in mm. his van and, and and take portraits and stuff. Um, because this the you know that big stupidly massive camera uh, that mm-hmm. I built you know, out of a Durst and Larger, he said, like, well, I'm going to have to come up and shoot your portrait on it. So, but yeah, alas, we haven't sort of nailed down any timings for it. And obviously now I'm kind of moving. I don't even know where I'm going to put the camera in Sky. Yeah. You're moving permanently to Sky, are you? Yeah. How far is that? Yeah. How, so how far is that from where you are at the moment? It's about three and a half hour drive. Okay. So, um, and, and Izzy, are you, are you, do you spend your time between, you know, with your dad or your mum, what's the what's your living arrangements? Um, I don't get the question. So. Oh, do you, do you split time with your mum and your dad? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So okay. it's, it's historically, what did it used to be? Fifty-fifty. Oh, um, it used, yeah, it used to be fifty-fifty, and now it's changing to three days at dad's and a week at mum's. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly. So we're gonna do weekends. Yeah. So that I can concentrate on, you know, art and working and earning a living and stuff like that. Um, and then when I come back of a weekend, it's all about quality time together, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Adventures. Yeah. Wonderful. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And are you? Will you be? Will you be going out on field trips with your dad with 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 his camera? Do you think? Um. Is it Maybe. All going to be, it's yeah, it's hard to shoot wet plate. It's it's really hard to shoot wet plate outside, isn't it? Really, apart from yeah. up the mountain. <laughs> it, yeah, I think from like my point of view, I, I we just narrowly missed out on taking Isaac up to scare Alistair a couple of months ago. But the weather just turned absolutely abysmal. Yeah. Um. So where did we go? Do you remember going to the um, old man of store? Old man of store. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've heard yeah. of it. I can't think what it is. What, What's, what's it's that? Like what's three the old kind of needles of rock? Um, okay. They're very, very iconic. They've been in loads yeah. of films, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, where was it? And and we took you to the Quran as well, where Alien uh, was it? Prometheus. Prometheus. Oh Prometheus. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh. So so you enjoyed that, didn't you? You're like yeah. fucking hell. Mm-hmm. This is like where it was shot. Um, yeah. 
so that that's cool so no he, he's been out but like I'll be honest um like when we went up to the store last time I was a little bit stressed wasn't I yeah why was I stressed so much oh um well <laughs> technically we only had one shot at it yeah we had one shot but you you like to do this thing where you just want to climb everything don't you I mean yeah. and why wouldn't you <laughs> I know, you know. I'm so, with you. Yeah. So is exactly. it fair to say one one sort of last question, Isaac, and we'll let you go. Is it fair to say that this whole photography business, particularly the wet plate photography that your dad's been doing the last few years, um is it been a really positive thing for him and for you for you as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um I think it's really helped dads more more dad than me with yep. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah uh, with money and stuff, um, because we're making a quite quite a fair bit of money off of our plates and stuff, and getting to see quite a lot of famous people that we wouldn't have actually seen if yeah, we didn't like us. do this. Yeah, super famous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, that means. I think what what you're talking about is this collaboration with Sky Films. Mm-hmm. So it's like a community cinema, um, and um, so um, so I'm friends with uh, Lena and Thor. Um, Lena is a producer, Thor is a director, um, and I think one of their most recent films is Adventures of a Mathematician, um, which is not out in the UK at the moment, but um, will be soon. But anyway, so, so they're doing a community cinema and um, every screening they'll um, bring along talent. So, you know, we've, we've shot the likes of uh, Boiling Point film. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but immense film. That was actually shot in one take, which like from a, like from a logistic point of view is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so, um, so, so yeah, the, the cast and um, that came up and uh, and I shot their portraits and off the back of that, you you had the chance to act next to Stephen McMillan, didn't you? Yeah. Um, in a, in a short film, so just like the wet plate, really, and these collaborations have opened up so many doors for for both of us. Yeah. And cool. You know, you're you're thinking about getting into acting, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it was Air Force. Oh. And then, well, to be it was a waiter at first, like a cocktail bartender. And then I wanted to go on Air Force, but I'm thinking of being an actor instead. Hang on, yeah. hang on. You So <laughs> what do I want to be when I grow up? I want to be a cocktail waiter. Yeah. Uh, no, wow, uh, a co- yeah. 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 I mean, mm-hmm. bar- is that because you just fancy shaking things and throwing them up in the air and, and lots of uh, chatting up lots of cool girls? <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah <laughs> although you know you, i don't know what you're talking about that the modern bartender is called a mixologist and they are actually what? kind of amazing because yes, i've so had much. not not that i've ever done this in my youth but like you can literally go to a really good bartender and be just like they'll be like what do you want i'm like make make something up and they'll be like what's your mood i'm in this mood that mood i like sweet savory whatever and next thing you know you got this crazy thing that's not on any menu anywhere sitting in front of you and it's absolutely delicious so you know yeah yeah don't don't go disparaging yeah don't go really i was just a curious it was just a curious job choice really (laughs) it is a curious job choice that is true that is true now you've explained it to me i'm you know it clearly isn't they're kind of genius actually if you Mm -hmm. find a really good one you'll follow a good bartender that yeah. sounds like I'm an alcoholic, but you'll follow you'll follow a really good bartender from place to place. Well, yeah. Listen, yeah. Listen, listen, Isaac, you um you sound like a very well balanced and thoughtful young man. So way you more um, than us. Yeah, way more than us. So carry on, whatever it is you're doing, helping your dad. Yeah. I'm you on the PlayStation. Carry, you just kept well, yeah, I meant oh, no, 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 sorry, in a broader sorry. sense. But if you're yeah. on your place, if you're on your PlayStation now, what are you playing? <laughs> you put him on the spot now. Oh. He's in the shit now. <laughs> oh, is it something I'm you shouldn't be playing? Grand Auto. Oh, are you? Oh, oh. Uh, so have you say, son, and, um, risque. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I, I, I do. I do. I don't know. I don't know. I understand there are some controversial parts in it. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 Especially for an eleven year old young man. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah. you know what? 
you know what? I think those things, it's all about context, isn't it? And if you're playing those games and you can uh, you can do it so that you can talk about some of the more, perhaps there'll be some troubling aspects to it. And clearly, you know, your dad is well-versed to talking about things. So, you know, yeah. you, so if there, are tr- if there are troubling parts to games like that, then talk to your dad about it and put it into context. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you do that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, young man, I'll I'm let not... you get back to I'll let I'll let you get back to playing um, Noddy's Adventures in Toyland. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well done, Eddie. Pleasure to meet you, Thank buddy. You. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, love you. <laughs> I think we'll we'll probably look to draw things to a, a halt unless there's some burning part. I mean, there are areas we haven't touched on. Um, I know you've had collaborations with other with other uh, service folk through your through your mental clothing and stuff, but folks can yeah. go and read around the whole mental clothing project, right. and we'll put uh, we'll mm-hmm. put a number of links into the show notes. Well, on that, about can that. I can I ask just like one final? Uh, question? Well, I, this is why I start to wrap up because I know Eric's always going to come back, and we're going to end up talking <laughs> more. One more, so one more. <laughs> always room for one more. One more. Um, so, like when this is all said, and when this particular piece is all said and done, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you'll have done, you'll have gotten your own like personal sort of, you know, art, we're just going to call it adventure art therapy, right? So sure. done and dusted for, for better, for, always for better. I was going to say for better, mm-hmm. for, just for better success yeah. or failure photographically, but for you better. Um, are there, do you have any thoughts or plans around how to then take this sort of experience and either make it available to other people with PTSD or to sort of expand it into a service for other, you know, how do you, how do you then take this individual experience and use it to help others directly who are in your, who are in your situation or whom you think could help? It could help. So I think, I think that's, that's the aspect that I'm really going to need help with, you know, in terms of like structuring and, you know, uh, like uh, making it accessible. And, you know, I did like, oh man, just so much work for this creative Scotland kind of bid. Um, So there's, there's a ton of like background work that's kind of sitting there ready to go. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I got really like a little bit, despondent when you know they didn't fund it because it's a super super long um process and they were really really supportive of it and and positive about it but it just didn't make it on the day um and oh god you know that that was actually a massive hit for me because I thought I was going to be successful having spoken to you know uh the panel um and stuff like that um so I kind of I kind of just parked it with with the premise that you know i can pick it up um with the support of somebody or or a body of people that you know are actually wanting to buy into it um and and it went as far as you know get, get getting in touch with like universities around here like uh, napier university sort of you know were alluding to you know i should be doing a phd in all of this sort of stuff but then, you know, without the funding, nothing happened. Um, so then, you know, like I'm saying, I parked it. But for, for me, really, everything is set to go. I just need to um, be exposed to the the right people, um, you know, to, to be able to take it to the next level. Um, what does what does it look like? Like that that thing that's parked, like what does what would it actually entail? So yeah, so essentially, what I I mean, like what what one of the the biggest kind of constraints of the the mental collodion project that Creative Scotland looked at was, you know, we're in COVID, it's lockdown. How do you make this project accessible, and all the rest of it? And and that spurred me on. To, you know, I got a little bit pissed off. You know, a with COVID and and be with being like isolated and stuff because you know my geographical location up in the highlands is um you know it's not accessible um right. and the you, you know the, the the people that i really want to kind of help and interact with literally don't have the cash to to, to come to the studio and you know and, and and all the rest of it and it's completely understandable um so then i thought right okay there must be a way of shooting a wet plate um, of, you know, a computer screen. 
Mm-hmm. So that spurred me on. And then I spoke to Shane and, and realized that him and Marcus had actually done, uh, they'd done a portrait, I think, of them standing side by side. But obviously Shane wasn't there. And, um, you know, long story short, I think it was um, of a projected image via a Zoom call or something like that. Um, and they were able to produce a you know legitimate wet plate and I thought okay fine so I you know I didn't like ask for any details I just started you know testing it myself and you know found that uh, 45 seconds uh, I think at f5-6 would give me an image you know that I you know of of a computer screen and then this um, this young lady, Mariam, um, who is based down in Kent, got in touch on, on Instagram and we, you know, wanted to explore the uh, stages of grief. Um, and that spurred us on to do like a series of plates, you know, basically her in Kent, um, you know, via Zoom. And, uh, and, we, and we, we actually did uh, multiple exposures and they just look mental, you know, really good um so like the 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 it kind of looks Mm -hmm. like being able to um offer this kind of cathartic process uh very artistic process you know anywhere really right you know i mean what you did um, what what you did at the photography show you know mm -hmm. we're in that sort of i was meant to be half now it might have been a bit longer than that really (laughs) yeah but (laughs) that that. was that anyone with (laughs) anyone with any history of uh uh, you know uh, that kind of illness mental illness yeah. depression to see a positive role model and to take some you know to take a situation where you're pretty much rock bottom and through creativity and art and this particular form of photography to see where it's taken you on a sort of positive journey you know links with forces friends to um to work tightly with them uh, mm-hmm. through these stages of grief pictures which you did show at the photography show um, different avenues and rabbit holes that are open and okay you not everyone who's gone through similar things to you is going to take up a wet plate camera but mm-hmm. it's showing that there is life beyond you know this sort of um, downward spiral there is a way out of it and that's a real positive message and it even if even if you did even if you took wet even if you took um mental collodion and just carried on sharing that either remotely or because you know you're up in scotland i mean there's a limit isn't it to the people you yeah. can come in contact with yeah <laughs> uh, and then if you can you know particularly if you can generate some kind of um some kind of income even if it's just to cover some costs you know um because mm-hmm. uh, you know yeah i mean uh, and then you've got collodion. the new then you've got the new you've got the new you know the film that's going to come out of this next trip to yeah. build upon that as well haven't you so you've you're almost going to have like a, a two ready made you know stories to take out into the yeah out into the well, world and it's just finding the right vehicle to take it out into the world and yeah and and just even enabling folks to interact with you and and with the camera with the process to mm-hmm. to visualize themselves and to get those things out into into physical form is is as i'm sure you found with with people who've done it with you really cathartic and really useful and really helpful you know it's it's a collaboration right like um yeah. you're collaborating with someone you're not you're not taking a picture you're making an image in collaboration with the person yeah. that you're making it with yeah absolutely eric i mean you know any any stage of the process is cathartic or or certainly immersive so that that's the thing that kind of got me through was the fact that like conversely I know we're trying to wrap up but um I guess historically before I was into art and and photography and, and, and all that stuff like if I was having a shit day which I was pretty much every day um I'd jump on my motorbike and just cane it and it would be that absolute 100 percent. i'm immersed in what i'm doing because if i'm not i fuck it up and i'm probably gonna die but that 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 
kind of frame of mind made me feel alive it, it kind of brought me back because mm-hmm. I was 100% in that moment it was like being mindful but in a completely stupid way um but but the wet plate process gives me that it's it's exactly the same mm-hmm. yeah you, you know but but it's in a very positive kind of way yeah um yeah. and every step of like the wet plate collodion process is very immersive very critical very creative and you're actually you, you, you know when, when i'm when i'm in front of somebody taking their portrait or making their portrait as you say eric um it, what i say to them look you know this is like five to ten seconds of your life and my life actually consolidated in a precious metal the same light that is hitting you is is you know going to be transposed in, into this plate and preserved for eternity basically so it's a very very special thing and if somebody's going through some shit for me it's like you can kind of bring them out of it by saying look you are not your feelings you know you might feel completely rock bottom but actually with a bit of learning and a bit of insight and a, and a hell of a lot of practice you can uh, you can ascend that kind of feeling shit and and I think by looking and and feeling the plate it's it's like this way of saying look this is this is you then but but you're you're here now you right. feel different now it's a way of kind of like proving that you can get through some stuff and like when i look at like obviously because i'm moving house at the moment i've had to take down all the plates from the studio and the house and all the mental collodion plates have come down and actually you know you know that took me like a day to take down all the plates and i was looking at every single one under the light and i was thinking jesus like what what a journey and i've come an incredible amount of improvement um and it's it's just so positive to to look at me then and to think that yeah that that is how i felt but but now i've put the work in and i've i've really i've put the work into myself and i understand myself so much better but then when you're looking at the plate you think yeah i've improved mm-hmm. I, I don't know how to really put it into words, but because that was you at that moment in time, and you yeah. can recognize that, and you can recognize, yeah. and and probably as the not probably, but absolutely for me, anyways, as a photographer, mm-hmm. like re experience everything from that moment, yeah, emotionally or intellectually, or both, um, and then come out of it and go, Well, this is where I am now. Like for really difficult images, you know, I absolutely like go right back into whatever there's some images I just can't look at again because yeah. I they're difficult they're yeah. really difficult yeah well I mean if yeah. folks yeah. If, yeah. if folks go and hunt uh search mental collodion on and look at some of the work that Simon did early on you know some of the where you know where his, his face is looking in different directions there's some, some work involving chains and being bound and constrained I mean it's really powerful powerful stuff and um Mm -hmm. you know you must look back on that now and well you know you it's been transformative hasn't it really you know yeah it it, it definitely is transformative and it's it's i got like all the words are kind of escaping me now um that's a (laughs) gin yeah no gin gin normally helps it's putting up with us (laughs) <laughs> yeah we no but it's it. what, what do you call it um uh validating yeah. um mm-hmm. you know you know you know when you when you when you see how you felt um and it's it, it, it's just it's just validating when you when you hold a plate and you see how you felt back then and how bad you were um and and compare it to how you feel now after putting in that work and actually just committing to yourself and having that um, endurance to just experience the feelings, but not, not let those feelings take control of you. And that's like, that's a consistent theme in all my plates. It's just like this, this duality and 
being your own self, um, being your own uh, worst enemy and, and, and stuff like that. You know, when you've come through that, it's just like 100% positive, you know, and if, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, I, I did a series with, with Hugh Mackay. He's, he's currently serving in four squats. Um, and, uh, you know, we decided, I mean, the whole ethos about mental collodion is I was never going to pull any punches. It, it was whatever is going on is going on that plate and I'm going to explain it visually. And, you know, we, we did a shot, you know, when um, when he said he was contemplating suicide and stuff. And that plate is just so powerful to him mm-hmm. um, be, because, it, you know, one exposure was him, you know, literally with a noose around his neck. Um, and, and the other plate was him sitting up feeling proud and, you know, having overcome that stuff. And it was something really powerful about you know the fact that you never really know what's going on with somebody you know the 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 front that somebody puts up is it's just bullshit um and you have to strip those layers back but doing it on plate and doing it as a creative process and then actually giving somebody that plate to then look back on i mean that's that's yeah you know it's powerful mm. It is. It really is. Look, look. I, we, we could, particularly as the gin starts flowing, and yeah. I open a bottle of yep. beer, and it's early for Eric. Um, I mean, you know, this, I, I could this, this conversation could <laughs> could could flow and flow. There's there's loads more yeah. we haven't really touched yeah. on, but I think we ought to probably um, uh, yeah. stop here. And also, I think sure. that, that that last message uh, from yeah. you, Simon, is is a perfect, yeah. powerful yeah. Ender. ender. That's yeah. that's a great yeah. So I've got um, just a few things to to wrap up. Um, Don't ask me. I, I've no, I, I won't. Uh, we we do have a uh, we do have a coffee dot com page, which is coffee coffee dot com coffee dot com uh, <laughs> forward, forward slash large format photography podcast, which you may or may may not be able to find. Um, I know Simon Forster uh, appreciates anything that comes his way because eventually he's going to ask me and Eric to put our hands in our pockets to pay, pay for the hosting. Host, pay for the hosting. Um, <laughs> we we normally ask if anyone's got any uh, shout outs. Any you know we've all spoken about folks, um, but uh, Eric likes to thank his wife. But uh, Eric, any shout outs? Well, I mean, you know, always. Well, you've been Are a there? super busy. You've been a super busy bunny, haven't you? You know, with I have. Of, I have so sorts of crazy projects. Yeah, um, yeah. So on that note, you know, obviously, always Heather, because without her, I can do nothing really successfully. Mm-hmm. That's just the way it kind of rolls. This dark room is, and she built this dark room. She built. She used dark. to run a contracting company. So for my birthday, she built this dark room. Amazing. Yeah, she's a badass. Um, but also my, my, uh, people should look him up. Mark Beamer, uh, on mm-hmm. Mark Beamer. He's a photographer. I went to what you guys would call university with for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, I built a custom camera for him and that was super fun. He's the photographer for my chemical romance. So he's currently on world tour with, with my chemical romance and, uh, yeah. um, great guy, really talented punk rock photographer. He's awesome. And then when yeah, so you uh, were talking about him online, weren't you somewhere yeah, on yeah. Instagram? I think. And his work is immense. Wayne Martin Belger, uh, who hired me, uh, who I met four years ago today at the end of that bicycle trip, by the way, that's in the movie. Right. That was literally today I met and photographed oh, Wayne for the first time. Uh, he hired me to build two 8x10 lenses for his latest project, the Smithsonian, and that was just an com- incredible honor. Yeah. Um, and then also for the project I'm putting together right now, um, Oliver over at uh, great north which is a cycling consultancy there over the uk he's a he's a great guy a good friend um is helping me get sponsors which we were just talking about like working with sponsors sure. um and then johannes from uh the ef eb tibco education cycling team um who's allowing me to embed with them for the women's edition of the perry roubaix classic bike race which i'll talk about more later so these things are out there i've got a project that's coming together and it will involve eight by ten uh portraits 
as well as my Graflex 3A. Oh, so, so if you've got it's any links or things to send me for the show oh, yes. notes, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, oh, okay, so I asked you for one shout out and wish I hadn't asked now. Could we go? Dude, oh. but then you said I had projects. So I was like, I have a lot of people. You did, yeah. I was, I was being, it's your I was fault, being, sir. I was being nice. Your fault. I, I know. I appreciate that. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Simon. Um, wow. You know. Is there somebody mm-hmm. who we perhaps should have spoken about, but we haven't quite got round to, um, who you'd like us to go and uh, you'd like listeners to go and investigate further? I think like following suit with Eric, um, like my my now wife Sonia Davda, um, Davda Riddell now. Um, <laughs> she, um, she, yeah, I mean, she's pretty much everything. Um, you know. Uh, and she's also a creative writer, so she's she's sort of you know trying to find the time to 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 get on with her novel and publish some uh, short stories and um, mm-hmm. poems and things. But obviously, like we're so busy, you know, with family life and moving and just other projects that you know she she's not finding the time that she needs to find at the moment. And I really just you know I know when she comes out with that first first publication she's just gonna feel amazing and i can't wait for that um Hmm. and you know god she just blows my mind basically so yeah you should check her out um i guess the website is 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 i think it's published um but i think you know she's working on it at the moment so in the next couple of months watch out for sonia dafter riddell but obviously, she's keeping the Sonia Davda as a publishing name, you know, publishing name. So, what's the middle name? What's the? Is it like a, a hyphenated name? Yeah, like yeah. So, ma- it's, that was yeah, so basically, like name. if you search Sonia Davda, then um, uh, and it's with a Y A, um, then uh, then you'll get her. How do you spell it? D A. D A V D A. Yeah. Okay, Sonia Davda. Okay, okay. Anything else? Yep. So Eric had a few. Yeah, you, no, you can just... you can do more than just one since I blathered on. <laughs> no, just like just a massive thanks to my like my family and mm-hmm. like all all of the people that I've interacted with probably in the last couple of years. Um, you know, um, the guys from you know Special Forces, SAS who yeah. dares wins. Yeah, we didn't we didn't talk about that. Yeah. We didn't even talk about them. No, um, that's a huge part of um, you know my my sort of journey. Uh, mm. Having met those guys and we didn't talk about your lifeboat antics. Yeah, oh, yeah, the fucking lifeboats. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll save that for and, part two. Yeah, part two. I think. Yeah, maybe the maybe it does warrant a part two when I come down from the mountain. When you come back down from the mountain, we'll um, we'll perhaps get you back on. Well, there's no perhaps yeah. about it. We will get you back on and uh, yeah. keep keep us informed as best uh, as best you can. You know, I mean, if you get the opportunity to drop some stuff into the large format photography podcast yeah yeah uh, definitely i will yeah that would be that would be good now your GoFund. i haven't got any shout outs by the way your go fund me <laughs> your wife uh, will be so mad at that she's you, gonna be raging what are you talking about yeah, well I've got, I've got to thank julie for being lovely and supportive smart man yeah <laughs> yeah there you go particularly in uh um particularly as i've i've, I've actually been signed off work through work-related stress until this week so and I'm, in, I'm in between jobs so uh, there we are and she's been super supportive over all my work-related troubles yeah um, we need it we need we need that support yep. yeah yeah it's the rock isn't it yeah the rock in the storm partners can be absolutely um so look i'm i really think you can find sponsorship and Eric sounds like he's on a mission to help you. I try. Um, I don't <laughs> think you, you need. I don't think you need to raise ten thousand pounds to buy your own gear. I'm sure. I'm sure. There's folks out there can help. Um, but so. having having said that, it it won't hurt if you've got a bit more than 110 quid in your GoFundMe. So yeah, um, yeah. I've, I I did share a link into the Lenses mm-hmm. Podcast Facebook group, but uh, not mm-hmm. everyone's on Facebook. Um, yeah. So I'll put a note in the in the sh- in the show notes. Um, but if folks go to GoFundMe and then pro, uh, Peak Perseverance, is that what? Yeah, so sure. yeah, yeah, that that that'll come up. That'll find it. Okay, and um, 
where do we you're on instagram we could, is that the best place for folks to keep track of you what's your favorite social media outlook i think it is update, yeah i think instagram folks? yeah facebook is pissing me off left right and center okay. um it's kind of crap so it's what um we, yeah you've got a couple of instagram accounts i think but uh yeah like the main one that i'm pushing on um is sr film photography yeah um, okay all right so yeah everything will go up there all right yeah okay well turning my crib sheet over uh, we have a Flickr site flickr.com you, you can go there and post uh, interesting large format pictures or boring large format pictures uh, no such if thing you, um, if you wish we have um we, we have an email address if someone wants to send eric an email and ask me I'm, anything I've, I've no idea if anyone's been sending emails it, it, we might we find you, out Simon. what's our um what's our what's well, our we'll what's our email you. address uh, eric i told you not to ask me but it's large format photography podcast at gmail.com there we are well done oh, i got it and um Yep. So it just goes to show, just goes to show, just goes to say that um, we have some outro music by Kevin McLeod, known as Two Finger Johnny, which everyone hate, uh, hate, loves. Loves. Everyone loves Two Finger Johnny. Uh, Simon, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we look, so Likewise. we wish, we wish you all the best with uh, uh, this mad journey. I still think you should do it in the summer, but uh, anyway, <laughs> what do I know? And yeah, when, you come, I mean, when, when you come back down, we'll, um, whatever stage you're at with shows, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to go once a month, but we'll fit you in, even if we come on and do a mm -hmm. special hour thing, just to see how you got on and uh, sure. what the challenges were and how folks can carry on supporting you. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's been fantastic guys i mean like any any support and positivity is you know it's it's what i always take up like you know th this experience and the positivity as a result will be on the mountain with me and mm -hmm. you know all the help is you know always appreciated so you know thank you very much for having me on yeah you're very well Our pleasure so um good luck with the move and uh, yeah, man. <laughs> we'll all say goodbye to each other. <laughs> goodbye. All right. Perfect. Goodbye. goodbye. Good night. Take it easy. Have <laughs> a good, good day, day. Eric. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Have a good night. I will do. <laughs>